Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to get started with a celebrity vector drawing like you can see on my screen here. And you know, where is this going? So I do want to show you that the end result we want to be something like this. Okay, so we want to create a flat vector based drawing vector meaning that it is flat shapes that can be stretched infinitely um, versus pixel based art which we uh, will touch in photoshop so we're going to use google drawing uh, it's a very simple tool but it does its job so we're going to show you how to get that done all right so the first thing we need to do is find our image so i did just open a google search and uh, i searched daniel levy i'm a big uh, schitt's creek fan and uh and i like what he does in general so i found a good image of him so that's that's step one is you don't want to find an image of him like or whoever you choose like on the red carpet or a screenshot of zoom or something like that you want to choose something a little bit more artistically done um something that's a little bit more professional and maybe an interesting angle as well usually when they're straightforward like i am right now like it's gonna end up looking a little bit like a mug shot. So having a slight angle or head tilt uh, does wonders. So go ahead and search whoever you wanna search, pause the video, that way you get who you wanna get. And then what you're gonna do is, um, I like to find a high quality image. So a lot of times I will change my search size to large as I'm doing it. Um, medium will work too, actually. My, my picture I chose went away. So I'm gonna switch to medium and then, uh, find that image and then click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to right click or control click and I'm going to say copy image. So I'm going to copy that image and I'm going to make a new Google drawing. And how do you get to Google drawing in general? Well, you're going to be in your Google Drive um, and all you're going to do is when you're in your Google Drive, you're going to go to file uh, new and then you should have the option to do a new drawing. Um, I'll show you how to get there in just one second. Okay, so in your um, in your drive, like so this is my drive, you're just going to go to new over here. And it won't show up as one of the first things. You'll have to go to more. But then Google Drawing should be the first, if not close to the top, for your options. So go ahead and click new. It's going to load. It'll take a second. And then here we are. So once we load, we are going to change our paper size to allow it to have a little bit more space to work side by side, because that's going to be the best way to work in our project. So the first thing we're going to do is go to File, um, Page Setup, which of course I can't see right now because my little head is blocking it. Um, and then you're going to go to uh, the widescreen option. And that's fine, we don't need to do custom. Widescreen will work just fine. And then we're gonna hit apply. And it is important to do that before you add your picture. And then I'm gonna go ahead and name it. I'm always gonna use my name in the title. And then um, I'm gonna use his name. And then it's a vector. You, As long as your name is in it and your project is in it, you're gonna be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that Google search. Again, I'm going to right click or control click whatever you have on on your trackpad. I'm going to say copy image. I'm coming back to my project and I'm going to paste it in. So command V or if that doesn't work, just come in to edit and paste. And so there's my picture. Now, obviously, I have a lot of empty space over here and over here. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to crop this down. And you can get rid of some of the shoulders if you need to, like that. You want it just more like paper size. And then I'm going to slide it over to this right side. And I'm going to enlarge it so that it at least fills top to bottom. There we go. Okay, so once you have filled that left side, go ahead and copy and paste. You can Command C, Command V, make another copy, and you're going to push that over to the other side. Okay. And so that's going to kind of be our workspace. We want to make sure that we fit on the page as much as possible. So there we are. Okay, so how do we do this? Where are we starting? Well, we're going to start with basic shapes and blocking out. So as if you look at my example that's already in progress, 
we are going to basically trace large chunks. So, so far I have traced his skin and his hair. I've ignored the glasses. I've kind of gone around them. I haven't even done the shirt yet, which actually will be really easy. And I definitely haven't touched any shading or any added values, okay? We're just blocking in our basic shapes today. So, going back to my live example, the only tool you are basically gonna be using today is the polyline tool. So that's hidden underneath where this line segment is. You're looking for this tool right here. It's called the polyline tool. So go ahead and select that. And then we will also be adjusting the color later on. We don't need to worry about that right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what you are gonna need to learn how to do is how to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, you can use the function over here if you prefer to use clicking, or you can use the keystroke options. So looking at our keyboard, it is option, command, and the plus sign, or option, command, and the minus to zoom back out. So I'll show you how that works. So option, command, plus. So obviously that zooms in, and then I can still use my trackpad to move up and down, left and right, option, command, minus, to zoom back out. You need to zoom in to make this work properly, but you don't wanna be so far in that it makes it uncontrollable. So I'm gonna come one more in. This is where I'm gonna start, okay? With my polyline tool. Now I'm accidentally already connected on something, so I'm gonna undo and get a new line to start. Come on, there we go, okay. So your polyline tool, if you notice, you can see this like blue string here. It is going to basically connect to things over and over. Um, I'm on my left side, so I need to scooch over here. So I'm gonna undo that line, get rid of it, and now I'm ready to go. I am working on my left side, so if I zoom out again, I'm gonna work on this left side over here, and then I'm gonna be dragging to my right side later. Okay, so I am tracing just his skin, okay? So anything that is skin related. So I am going to start clicking. I'm gonna start with his ear, because I find it easy to um start there for whatever reason i'm not sure and basically i am tracing it's not a rounded line it is meant to be a little more edgy rigid if you will so as i'm tracing whoop all right it happened and i'm glad it happened so i could talk about it i actually need you to not be super super precise when you're super super precise because it's google and not like photoshop or illustrator and not some fancy program this is a free program um it's not as sensitive as some of our other photoshop illustrator programs are so um what i accidentally just did was i clicked too close to my previous click and so it created a line segment you want to avoid that um i did try to figure out how to like group them together and make it work it's it's too complicated. It works, but it's really tricky. So I just want you to do it the right way. So I'm going, I just undid what I just did. And I'm going to start again. So I'm making sure my clicks are at least like a quarter of an inch apart. If you really um, are trying to make it more precise, then I suggest you zoom in one more step on your photo. Because the more you zoom in, the more you are kind of given allowance to click sort of closer together because when you're zooming in, it's really farther apart. So I'm going around his neck right now. Notice that I'm not going around the chin. I'm doing everything that is skin. We'll talk about layering on top for the chin and any sort of other shadow later. So I'm just tracing with my polyline tool in Google Drawing. Coming up here. Now, when I get to the glasses, I'm gonna pretend like they're not there. And I am tracing up and around because we will layer the glasses on his face, just like they're sitting on my face right now. So we will add them after the fact. We're kind of we kind of want to work back to front to be the most successful. And when I get up in the hairline, I wanna make sure that I kinda of go past the hair so that when I layer the hair on, there's no weird gap. All right, I gotta move over so I can see. So again, we're just doing the skin, which I constantly kinda of have to tell myself. So 
I'm like, what am I tracing? Why am I tracing it? All right. So I'm right back to where I started with my ear. It's kind of going to snap on its own. And then voila, I've got my big shape. You're like, whoa, what happened, Mrs. Vance? What's going on? All right. So oh, somehow I was working on my left. That's okay. So um, essentially, what you're going to do is then use the select tool, which is the arrow. And now it's going to select what you just did. And so it should have been over here. I apologize. I was working on my right and not my left. Uh, so say it was over here. Now I'm going to drag that over to the left side. And the reason why we're setting it up this way is so that you ha always have a clean image of your celebrity on the left so that you aren't getting hidden and trapped by what's over here on the right. Okay, now here's where I can go ahead and adjust my coloring and whatnot. So I'm gonna take away the outline and I'm gonna pick something that's skin color-esque for now. We can always go in and change it later. You can even have fun with it and make it like a very colorful vector and we'll talk about that later on. All right, so we're gonna keep repeating those steps. So I'm gonna go back now over to my left side like I was going to and I'm gonna zoom in command option plus I'm moving over here and now I'm going to trace using that polyline tool switch over here up here and I'm going to trace the hair this time and obviously there's a lots of little like stray marks you just kind of got to pick and choose your battles when you want to um, kind of give some recognition to those or just kind of clean up their hairline. It's really up to you. As we go. So this is really it. You are constantly repeating yourself, breaking down basic shapes with these line segments, and then it's turning it into a vector. So the photo that we are looking at right now is pixel based. Okay, it's a rastered image. And vectors are flat. Whoop, I double clicked. So that can happen. You have to be careful. Um, and unfortunately, like when you when you hit the undo button, it's not gonna come back to my line. It's going to make me redo it. Okay, so it is a little frustrating in that sense. Um, be patient. You're not gonna be like me and be distracted and talking to a computer as you are working. Um, but you do need to realize that that is a possibility. It can happen. And if and when it does, you just have to start that segment over again. So really be gentle with your clicking on your keyboard. If you, um, for whatever reason, have an external mouse that you're using, that might help you. But I know it's definitely a point of frustration, especially like, you know, when I'm doing a tutorial like I'm doing. But again, the more I can provide real life examples for you, the better off you will be in the end. So I'm actually sort of glad that I accidentally double clicked. So I'm working my way around his hairline. So what happened, I think, is when I made that little like jut out V there, I was a touch too close. And so it recognized it as a connection versus a different shape. So again, Google isn't nearly as sensitive as I would like it to be. But again, it is free software. And really cool software, actually. I don't use Google Drawing a lot, but it's I'm coming around to it. All right, so I'm making my way around his hair. I don't need to worry about the eyebrows yet because they are a separate shape. So I'm only doing connected shapes right now. I'm not worried about his um, beard yet either. And I've got to trace back around the ear so I know where to kind of match it as a puzzle. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the outline. And I'm just gonna pick a really dark brown. Ooh, that's like reddish brown. Nope. So I'm gonna go to custom and hit the plus sign. And I'm gonna drag it more to the orange value because I find that to be a better, warmer brown. And I'm clicking pretty close to that black area. So it's a dark, dark brownish black. I'm gonna zoom out. And now I can use my select arrow and I'm gonna drag and match it up. 
Now, what if you don't know how to match it up? What if you're confused about where it goes? Well, we have some options. So what you can do is click on your background and you can reorder it. You can say, bring to the front. And then there's his um, picture so that, hang on, do it that way. I'm gonna back up a couple steps. So I'm gonna say, bring to front so that the photo comes forward. So see, I've lost my skin, right? And now I'm gonna click over here. And now I can match up just the hair using the original photo. It's gonna disappear behind, but as soon as I click on the photo again and say, send it back, now it's going to overlay the right way. So there's your way to kind of match up and, and bring things forward and back so that you can see it. And we still have our real copy over here for us to use. Um, so the next thing I would do is I'm gonna go ahead and add in the shirt. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do it. I'm gonna let you start working. I'm gonna use the magic of editing and uh, pause the video and come right back to you when I'm done with the step that I want you to get done for today. Okay, so what I did was I was a little bit more generic with this shirt because I could be. Because what I'm gonna do when I move it over to the other side is it's going, I'm gonna actually move it backwards in layers to make it go behind the skin layer. So it didn't matter that I was, you know, slightly um, into the skin, chin, neck area because what I'm gonna do after I change the color, so I'm gonna change the color quick and I'm gonna put in, um, I'm gonna put it in the dark gray just to make it a little different. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the order. So I'm right clicking and I'm saying send backwards and I'm gonna have to do that again. And there we go. So I'm sending it back one layer at a time so that the order of uh, my layers, so this one was put on first, then the hair, then this one. Um, so I had to switch the order so that this was the most back. Um, yeah, so then don't forget that you can do that same thing and you can double check everything by bringing your photo back to the front and then sending it to the back to kind of check as you go. I would like you just to get three or four layers done today based on your celebrity will kind of depend on what you do. I don't want you to do any accessories or parts of the face yet. I just wanted you to block in the shape, maybe the clothes and the hair, and that's it for today. And we'll learn more in the next video. Thanks, guys.